Hello and thank you for joining us on Journalist Hangout on Sunday. I am Ola Jumoke on Latunji. Today on the program, Edo Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu defects from PDP to APC. House of Representatives throw weight behind Dangote Refinery as Nigerians demand removal of NMDPRA bars over anti Dangote Refinery comments. And later on the show, in our Journalist Hangout Weekend Special, Babajide Kolade Otitoju explores the pains, gains, and boundless potential of Irish potato farming. I will be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju and Adewale Adeoye. Gentlemen, good afternoon to you. Welcome good to afternoon. Journalist good Hangout afternoon. on Sunday. Good to know viewers. Journalist Hangout starts now. As medical advancement continues to evolve, Nigeria is thriving not to be left behind. In Kwa State, North Central Nigeria, a brown intensive care unit has been inaugurated at the University of Ilorin Teaching Hospital, Ilorin. It is a specialized state-of-the-art medical facility that provides advanced care for patients with severe burns. At the inauguration of the facility, Governor Abdurrahman Adurazak says continuous partnership with the private sector in healthcare is crucial to addressing complex challenges in the sector. Let's share the story by TVC News, Ibrahim Alege with you. The University of Ilorin Teaching Hospital, Ilorin, was established 44 years ago as one of the second generation tertiary hospitals. Since then, patients with burn injuries have had to be managed in open general ward, which has been counterproductive because many of them died from infections. <laughs> This led to the donation of these burn intensive care units. It is a specialized state-of-the-art medical facility that provides advanced care for patients who have sustained severe burns. As we all know, health care is a basic human right, even though that may not reflect in our society all the time. Yet, it's far from being equally accessible to all of us. So, I... The onus is on us all, as responsible citizens of this country, to bridge this gap and provide quality health care to those who need it most. This is a teaching hospital. You must, uh, uh, government, government, government cannot shoulder the responsibility of hospitals alone. That is what we know, but that is also costly. And healthiness is no respect of any status or creed. Everybody can be here at any time. But the availability of those things to be used to cater for that person is very important, very crucial. Please let us, please and please let us come to the heads of our health sectors. In his remarks, Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, represented by his Commissioner for Health, Amina El Imam, says partnership with the private sector is the model of modern healthcare financing. Collaborative efforts like this bring together resources, expertise, innovation and through education proper first aid and specialized medical care which this new wonderful center will provide we can together reduce the incidence complications and impact of burn injuries to the residents of Kwara state all of nigeria indeed west africa and the rest of the world the burn intensive care unit is expected to enhance health care delivery at the teaching hospital Ibrahim Alige, TVC News, Ilori. All right, gentlemen, uh, from what we see in that video, this marks a significant milestone in the healthcare sector of UITH. Uh, BQ. Yes, um, it also shows the extent that we can go if we work with private individuals, with uh, the private sector to improve on infrastructure in our country. That is road infrastructure, health infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, education infrastructure. Government cannot do it alone. In this case, uh, Elaji Sharif Shagaya, uh, son of a um, billionaire, um, Adam Bola Shagaya, built this uh, uh, intensive care unit yes. and what we have seen is um, a family transforming 
a negative experience to opportunities for healing and for real growth. He lost his paternal grandmother to a domestic accident. She was severely burnt and um, she died. Sheriff then thought, okay, this is a painful experience, but how do we ensure that people who find themselves in such a situation get an opportunity um, to continue to live uh, yeah. their lives? So he decided to build this bone intensive um, uh, <clears throat> unit at a cost of 250 million. Mm. You can imagine when an individual sets aside its money, 250 million, mm -hmm. to give back to the society. I mean, this is a young man that needs to be uh, praised for what he has done and he is not uh, somebody who enjoys the clear lights, the limelight. He didn't even grant an interview. Mm. Meaning that he merely did just look at the interior. He merely did this just to give back to the society. So He's not interested in the, in, in the noise that comes with it and uh, uh, all the attention, uh, grabbing a front page um, uh, opportunities in newspapers. Uh, and he just felt, look, this was the right thing uh, to do. There's nothing like it in our country mm. for now. Mm. Yes, uh, I'm talking about there are, you will find units of hospitals better equipped, but in terms of a unit dedicated to treating people who have suffered bonds, no, you are not going to find anyone in this class. So, we need more of such uh, facilities, and uh, I really uh, want to thank um, Elijah Sharif for what he has given back to his community in Illinois, Kwara State. And uh, I also appreciate the uh, leadership of the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital for agreeing. Uh, to the request of the donor of the unit to have it named after his grandmother, Elijah Batuli, uh, uh, Shagaya. So I wish the young man Godspeed. Uh, this certainly won't be his last intervention, but he, what he has done deserves not just commendation, but replication by other people who are rich, those rich people going to Dubai to buy flats. That's what Nigerians are Investing in other countries. Yes. Mm. They will steal money in our country and go to Dubai. They are buying flats. They are not even buying pieces of land. They just buy flats. That's <laughs> what we are doing to ourselves. All right, I do you. <laughs> One of its kind uh, in the country. How significant is this? Well, I think in the first instance, health is one of the most important aspects of uh, human life. No matter how rich you are, if there's no good health, your money comes to nothing. And then when you look at uh, health care, in terms of provision of health care, it's very lowly, you know, in Africa and in Nigeria especially. And then when you are talking about bonds, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who suffer bonds every year, every week, either from natural accidents, fire, gas, or even acid bonds, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, coming out from, uh, from domestic violence. And the, what we have seen over the years is that some of them become permanently disabled. Some continue to suffer trauma throughout their lives. Some don't have access to surgical procedures. Because when you have bonds, it's a multi health care, uh, care that you need. It involves uh, trauma treatment, it involves surgical operations. So a lot of Nigerians, apart from the fact that they cannot afford that opportunity. They don't have the money, you know, to... And this bond center, I understand, is uh, the best in the country. 
In the whole of northern Nigeria, there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And in this country, there's nothing like that. It costs about 250 million naira. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a lifelong investment for an individual. And uh, if you see, when we are talking about development in Europe, it's not just about government alone. Absolutely. You know, communities put into their society. Individuals put into their society. It's not every time you expect government to come out, provide roads, provide hospital, provide toilets. Mm -hmm. Communities must also know that is their, they need to invest in their own future. And uh, we are talking about Rockefeller, uh, for, uh, Ford Foundation, and all that. They were individuals that put in their lifetime investment into promoting you know, a livelihood and you know, empowering people. This is not the first time he has done it. He has done several things that uh, clearly indicated, uh, indicates that he's a man of the people. There was a time he gave 10,000 naira to about 500 traders. So you can see that this, this man is truly a man of God. And if people, if we can emulate, if our rich people can emulate him, to minimize the social tension, the conflict, everybody calling on government to do this and all that, if individuals can put in, it will go a long, a long way to solve the contradictions in our, in our society. So I am really happy for him. He's going to also create employment for people. And people will come in, and this is medical tourism. I see people coming from West African countries you know, to, for treatment. So it's a great investment. In I, I think that's the lesson to take away from this. Yeah. Philanthropists, uh, mm. uh, wealthy people yeah. can partner with federal government to bring to lives such interventions. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, let's